This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen decided to ditch me today, so today I am your KTR car guy. Bumper to Bumper Radio is heard here every Saturday from 11 to noon, and we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. If you've got car questions, we've got car answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602 277 5827-602-277-KTAR. And us, as I brought in Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialist to help me help you with your car. Another way you can get a hold of the show is at 411-923. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, open phones. We're going to be taking your texts and spark plugs. How the rules have changed in spark plugs and what brought this topic up for me was I had a customer this week with a Ford Mustang, and he came in for a clutch job to Tri-City Transmission, and the clutch was not the problem. The problem was one of his spark plugs had blown out, and for some reason they thought it was a clutch. So he said, why don't you ever talk about this on your show, spark plugs blowing out? And I said, we do, but maybe we haven't. We've talked about catalytic converters. We've talked about timing belts. We've talked about water pumps. Joel, spark plugs... Tell us a little bit just about how the rules have changed in spark plugs. Well, Dave, spark plugs are the one thing that's been on every car that I've ever worked on in my whole life. They've gone from just regular copper core old-fashioned spark plugs to up to iridium spark plugs now, where they went where you changed them every twelve to 15,000 miles, where now they're at 120,000 miles. Spark plugs used to be a do-it-yourself job for a lot of people. I think those days are kind of gone now. Well, not only that, the price of spark plugs has changed. We used to sell those things for $4.95 a piece, and it still happens on a few makes and models of vehicles, but you can pay $28 for a spark plug where it's totally different. And where the problem was on this Mustang is that when these manufacturers, they went from these regular traditional spark plugs that you could buy for $0.99 back in the day, and they went to platinum spark plugs, they changed their service interval to 100,000 miles. Well, if nobody looks at the spark plugs at 100,000 miles, in the old days we were changing them every 15,000 miles like clockwork. Eh, cars running bad. Yeah, go get some spark plugs. Well, those days are gone. So no one, no one looks at them or addresses them, and the spark plug builds up with carbon a lot of times, and then it also builds up with, uh, you know, the condensation creates a problem inside the combustion chamber. Because you can't get them out, and you can't access them, but you still need good spark plugs to run. You need your car to have the right spark plug in it. Not the one they just give you because it's fancy or more expensive or less expensive. You want to stick with what the manufacturer recommended, the brand they recommend. They just seem to work the best. A lot of days now to check a spark plug in a car or to replace them, it's not uncommon to see three to six hours labor just to replace spark plugs. So the interval's extended. The plugs are much better. They run better. But it's an expensive job, and it needs to be done right. And you need to put the right spark plug in the car at all times. Well, I would argue that waiting to 100,000 miles would be a bad idea. And in this guy's case, on this Ford Mustang, it had like 105,000 miles. And that was too long because in this case, is a 4.6 liter. The spark plugs actually kind of work themselves loose over that time because no one's checking them, no one's looking at them as they get loose. And when that piston comes up, there's a heck of a lot of pressure in there and just finally blows it out. I was reading an article the other day where a, a spark plug in a Mustang blew out hit the hood, came down, landed on the fuel rail, hit the Schrader valve, and the coil's right there, and it was a barbecue. It was... <laughs> so I, I know that, and I've seen it. I've seen cars where the spark plug blew out, and it put a big dent in the hood. And I've seen cars where... I had a car in just a few weeks ago, had 160,000 miles on it. We told the spark plug out. They were never changed. 
gap should have been about 60 thousandths. You, it, it was so thick, it was at least 100 thousandths. The car ran horrible. Once we replaced those plugs and coils, the car ran great after that. No well, one ever looked at it. It's one of those things that everyone forgets. And what happens, she talked about, are you losing the spark between you and your car? What happens, it's like a, a pair of shoes that wears out or a mattress that wears out. It just goes away over time. It's kind of like how do you boil a frog? Very slowly. You know, you, you throw it in hot water, it's going to jump right out. But as the spark plugs deteriorate, you're not, you're not seeing that incremental deterioration that happens year after year. You put some new spark plugs in, it's like, whoa, man, where did that come from? Helps with your fuel mileage, helps you run smoother. And if you don't have good spark, if you have a bad spark plug, high resistance can take out your coils, cost you even more money as time goes on. Well, the other thing that people may don't think about, but caps and rotors, we used to talk about caps, rotors, points, condenser, plug wires. Plug wires don't even exist anymore on a car. There, there's a few out there that have plug wires on it, but more, more so, they're gone. And what they're doing is there, if you've got a V6, a typical V6 has six spark plugs. I mean, there's some out there with 12, but most of them have six spark plugs. Each one has an ignition coil right over the top of it. So it's, they call it coil over plug, and so there's six coils. And one of the things that happens when you let, you let those spark plugs go, it ends up eating up those coils, and it takes your little, uh, your little $300 spark plug change to a, maybe an $800 because you need a couple coils. So you don't want to ignore these things called spark plugs. I mean, we were looking at a Toyota, Joel, that had a 30,000-mile interval still, but the majority of cars are going to 80,000, 120,000 miles. Actually, you see a lot of 120, but my shop and a lot of the shops, we don't believe in that 120,000 because you come to the point where you go to replace them, like you said earlier, you can't get them out, and they break, and it costs you triple. You can even wind up repulling a cylinder head to have to replace it. If it gets that bad, it can happen to you. So they either won't come out or they'll come out on their own. So either way, you're just not in good shape. Because when this one blew out in this Mustang, it took the threads right with it. So back in the day, there wasn't a lot of tools and, and fixes for that kind of stuff. But as time has gone on, we've learned to tap out the, tap out the head in you the know, car. You know, back in the day, you needed a 13, 16 spark plug wrench to change a spark plug. Now you need a whole assortment of tools and you take half the engine apart to get to the spark plug, and then you get down there, and the mechanic comes up to you and tells you, I don't have the socket to get it because this one has a 12-pointed 916th socket, which we just ran into the other day on a BMW. Well, Joel was telling me that in the old days, back when he was working in the Nissan dealership, that uh, he would change spark plugs. Can I say this on the radio? With an air ratchet? <laughs> I never said that. Okay. He never <laughs> said that. But, uh, you know, spark plug repair is one that can really go wrong. And so if you are a do-it-yourself, you're thinking, hey, I'm going to change my spark plug myself. Let's just talk about it a little bit longer because maybe it's not one that you want to do because it's, you know, they're a lot harder to access. You know, it didn't take more than dropping a little screw or something down that spark plug hole to wreck a motor. We've seen that many times. And if this little piece of dirt or something hard falls down there when you have the plug out, it can damage your whole engine. And if you're going to do it yourself, you need to have the right tools, the equipment. You need to blow the holes out first before you even remove the spark plug. You need to make sure you have the right spark plug. I was thinking about it, though. The spark plug's the one constant that's been in this business for over since cars have been out. Every car I've ever worked on has a spark plug. I haven't worked on an electric one yet, so I know they don't have it. I'm but. pretty sure Teslas don't have spark plugs, but uh, you know maybe we can call them and ask if they just put one in for just nostalgia <laughs> or something. I mean, it's got to have a spark plug on there, you know, so... But spark plugs, people think of tune-up. I need a tune-up. Can you tune up my car? Well, cars tune themselves anymore. So the tune-up, I guess that's replacing the spark plugs. But what is a tune-up? And that's a different definition altogether. But in the old days, it was cap, rotor, plugs, wires, you know, condenser, all that all that stuff happened. And, and now anymore, it six yeah, spark the plugs. The tune-up word's kind of gone. We call it maintenance nowadays. But it is a tune-up. If you're an old-school guy, it's maintenance. But if you don't change those spark plugs... You will have problems. If you do change them, you'll help with your fuel economy. You'll help your car run better. If you get a better spark and a better burn, it even helps keep your car with less carbon buildup. Yeah. So when we come back, we've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. 
Go where the pros go. Try City Transmission. Ready to improve your game? Hi, I'm Greg McClain. And I'm Brandon Harris. We created Premier Fitness Systems, a completely unique training and golf performance center in Scottsdale with a focus on strength, flexibility, posture, alignment, and body position. Having achieved great success with professional golfers and teaching pros, we're now offering you a challenge to improve your game with a free TPI golf screening and two golf performance training sessions. For our offer and testimonials, go to premierfitnesssystems.com. Improve your game, improve your life, Premier Fitness Systems. What would happen if you couldn't listen to Arizona's morning news on your way to work? I'd be pretty lost. I mean, that's what wakes me up. It gets me out of bed. How do you know what's going on in your community? If you're not listening to the radio, you're not listening to the news. You don't know anything. Huh? I should have tuned in. <laughs> Get your day started with Arizona's only all-news morning show. Arizona's Morning News. Weekday mornings 5 till 9. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Hi, Jerry Colangelo inviting you back to 1965 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Gold and Patriot courses at the historic Wigwam Resort. Our celebration kicks off this Memorial Day weekend with Bunker to Bunkers, Throwback with Bunkerville Golf Tournament, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Fighter Country Partnership. The two-person scramble is loaded with special throwback prizes, lunch, and a coupon for a free second round of golf, all for just $82. Room specials start as low as $110 per night. Register today at Bunker Golf. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt decided to take the weekend off. He's actually off at some training learning how to run a better auto shop and keep Virginia Auto Service doing business year after year. So I've got Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialist came in to help me help you with your car. To get a hold of the show, 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also reach the show by texting us at 411 411- Nine two three, and today we're talking about spark plugs and ignition wires and caps and rotors and. But you can call us and talk about anything you want to talk to, talk about, and it's really a ongoing theme of this show. Is that whatever advice you got from your grandpa about fixing your car, it no longer works. I mean, we still have spark plugs, as Joel. That's the one thing they have not been able to get rid of. But as far as that, everything else is is, is different. No more distributors, no more caps, no more igniters, no more rotors. It's all different. And pretty soon these cars are going to drive themselves. You know, I, w- I wonder if the road rage will go down once the cars are, you know, you're, you're not yelling at the guy next to you. You're yelling at his car. <laughs> you just got me out. <laughs> so anyway, well, up first this segment, we're going to go with Chuck in Chandler. Chuck's got a 2006 Sierra. How can we help you, Chuck? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, uh, good morning. Thank you. Hey, I've had this uh, truck since August of 2005. I bought it new, um, and I've owned it this whole time and maintained it. And when I bought it, I put a chip kit in it and a cold air intake and all kinds of boy toys, you know, ceramic headers and oh, yeah. cab back system and all that. But I, and I've run synthetic oil in it the whole time. It's got 97,000 miles on it, and I've absolutely done nothing to this truck. I think in, when it had 30,000 miles or something, the water pump went out. But other than that, this truck has been maintenance-free and all that. So going into the summer, I just think I've had it for 10 years, and I'm going to keep it because it's been paid for since I got it, um, and it's my baby. What kind of preventive maintenance? I mean, I'm thinking almost 100,000 miles. I, I haven't even had the brakes changed, okay? I mean, the the I guess it's got the ceramic brakes, and it just lasts forever. But I'm thinking I ought to do some serious preventive maintenance on this thing because we live here in the valley. I think the only thing I ever did was, is like at 50,000 miles, I had the radiator flush and the transmission flush or something to put new fluid in it. But otherwise, it's just been oil changes. And so I'm thinking, you know, probably about now, I'd be changing the serpentine belt for another preventive thing. Can you give me a list of preventive things that I had to, if I'm going to do a major deal, yeah, I think including I, spark plugs, maybe? I mean, you know. I, that's a per- perfect time to do spark plugs, and Joel's face looks pregnant with thought. He's he's thinking of all these things in his mind that yeah. he wants to do this Sierra truck in 100,000 miles. 
Well, I'm thinking you're a perfect candidate for the show today. That truck is due for spark plugs, and if I was replacing the spark plugs on that, that has the short ignition wires right off the coil, I'd replace the wires at the same time. I would definitely have my transmission serviced. I would definitely have the coolant system flushed. 10 years, 100,000 miles, make sure that radiator's in good condition. You want to check all your cabin filter, air filter, your rear differential fluid. I don't know if it's four-wheel drive or not, transfer case fluid, stuff like that. Is that normal to get 100,000 miles out of brakes, or is this guy just living right? Open that's one of those cars. Ladies? That's one of those cars, the Chevy pickups, those years, those brakes went forever. Those and the Forerunners, and my wife's Infinity has 108,000 with the original brakes, and I don't know why, because she usually burns through brakes right <laughs> I away. actually, because Joel's shop is right down the street from mine, and, and when I look, when I'm pulling out of the shop, I look both ways. I'm looking specifically for his wife. <laughs> <Decent. I> would. <laughs> But, uh, you know, the cooling system was a thing. You know, General Motors came out with that extended life. They were kind of the first guys on the block to do that maroon-colored coolant that said, oh, this stuff's good for 100,000 miles. You sent me a picture, Joel, of a bottle the other day. It said coolant good for 150,000 miles in 10 years right from the Mopar dealer, Chrysler dealer. That's what it says on the bottle. You're gonna you're you're talking to two guys that just do not believe. That I don't that believe stuff in looked. that. I think it's cheap enough to replace it much more often, probably every sixty thousand or five years on a bare minimum. That's what I would do. So cooling system, cooling system is the quickest thing to ruin a car. So, Chuck, thanks so much for the call. We got open lines at six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven six zero two two seven seven KTAR. We are going to go with Toby in Phoenix. He looks like he's got a 2003, maybe a Sierra. Hey, Toby, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Uh, so my uh, Sierra, uh, the air will only blow out the uh, defrost section of the uh, vents, so the, uh, the knob doesn't seem to work. Is that the, an expensive fix? If it is, I can probably live with it blowing out the defrost section. But, um, well, I don't know what that could be probably on that model, probably a blend or motor kind of thing where or the control panel. You'd need someone to check it, but I would think in Arizona and Phoenix, especially with the heat, you'd want that air blowing out the vents for you. I think I would have it checked. Those blend door motors can go anywhere from $250 to $1,500 if the dashboard had to come out, depending on which one it was. Now, now we talk about uh, a couple different things, but there's blend door motors, and, and they blend the hot and the cold air, and then there's a, a mode door, I guess would be the technical name for that. Yeah, it, and I probably jumped the gun either yeah, one. I'll, I'll forgive you. I won't slap you on the hand too bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there's blend doors and mode doors, but it, it's actually a common problem that I see people in the shop for is they're like, hey, man, my air's not coming out. Uh, of my dashboard. In the old days, it used to be when you got on the gas heavy, the, the air would go up to the vents, but when they got the, rid of the vacuum-controlled blend doors, that went away. A lot of times you hear the clicking because they're trying to go. Other times I've seen with the GMCs, especially if somebody replaces the battery, those motors go bad or they get stuck in one position, and then you have to have it fixed. For sure. So it might be worth getting it checked out because, I mean, you're going to get real swampy come July. You don't want that. So thanks for the call, Toby. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Aaron in Peoria. He's got a 2007 F-150. How can we help you, Aaron? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thanks, Dave. Enjoy the program. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I got a uh, this Ford truck. It's got just over 100,000 miles on it, and I'm getting some real hesitation on... Uh, acceleration between 40 and 50 miles an hour. Any thoughts or any help on that? Oh, man. Joel and I were just having this conversation before the show, and it I, I would almost call it its a pattern failure on these Fords. And, and we always get this job at the transmission shop, and the reason is people are they are going down the road, they're going about 45, and they, they tip into the throttle a little bit, and there's this hesitation or this jerkiness, and they think the transmission can't decide where it wants to. That's what they theorize in their in their mind before they bring the car to me. But what it tends to be is what we look at is, and they describe it to me on the phone just like you are now, and I know that it's going to be more than likely probably a bad ignition coil, and we're talking about spark plugs today, so you're due for your first set of spark plugs on that. And what, what the shop's going to do is they're going to identify, you know, they're going to diagnose it, identify which of, which of the cylinders is bad. You know, it could be the plug, it could be the coil, but chances are it's the coil. You can go in and replace, you're going to do all eight plugs, you can go in and replace just one coil, but in all honesty, you're going to do them one, one at a time, and it's just going to be annoyance trips back to the auto shop. Joel, you got the same truck. You got the original spark plugs on it? No. <laughs> I got 220,000 miles, and I'm, I've been through a lot of coils and a lot of plugs, could be a lot of things, though. You just need to know if your check engine light's been on. I'd have somebody that knows what they're doing check it. 
you need to know you got the right airflow meter that's clean and it's working good. But spark plugs would be and coils are a real common failure on that. It's PSA. a common failure, and I'm just kind of jump. You know, it really. You know, we can sit here and help on the phone, but honestly, there's nothing like a technician looking at it, diagnosing it, seeing what's going on, looking at things like fuel trim and all that data that that scanner gives us. Not codes per per se, but just data and just. You know, when a technician walks up to a car, he's smelling the car. He knows if it's running lean. He knows it, there's so many things that come into play when we diagnose cars that I don't think people quite realize. It's a complex reality. And there's no cars. code that says spark plug. No, and there's not even a misfire code in the system, you know, because a PO300 is a misfire, a random, random mis- miss. Yeah. Random misfire, and it, and it's so sen- it's, it doesn't pick it up. A lot of times those slight hesitations don't get picked up by misfire codes yet. For sure. Joel, it's that time of year where people got to start thinking about their batteries in their car. And the reason I want to bring up batteries today is we've got a new partner to Bumper to Bumper Radio, and that is Interstate Batteries. We've got two interstate distributorships here uh, by Billy Kahn and David, and they service batteries. Interstate Battery is the number one replacement brand of batteries. Joel, how long have you been around this business, and how many times have you come across the interstate? Come across them every day. been doing this for over 30 years now, every day. And, and the thing is, is that batteries, when they die, it's never convenient. I have that sign hanging in my office. <laughs> Battery failure is not convenient. Well, uh, they have a 30-month free replacement. The Megatron Plus is an excellent battery. It's what Matt and I both use in our shops for our customers, and uh, along with a lot of the bumper-to-bumper shops, provide those for their customers. So Interstate Battery, you can check them out at interstatebattery.com and find a location. There's locations everywhere. And spark plugs, spark plugs and batteries. It is that time. If you've got 100,000 miles on your car, maybe you've waited too long to get your spark plugs, ask. It's one of those things that are not easy to access anymore, so a lot of technicians just avoid them. You know, human nature is to be a little bit lazy, so if we've got to check plugs for you, it's like, oh, man, i got to pull the intake off to get over to those plugs. So it's something not to forget about. It can cause you more, you know, catalytic converter damage, you know, for instance, with bad spark plugs. Things like that. So when we come back, we're taking more phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTRR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take to Kurtz. Swain Palm Trees, Poolside Margaritas, and Lush Championship Golf. Don't waste all your precious time, gas, and money trying to cram a three-day road trip into your Memorial Day weekend this year. Hi, this is Jerry Colangelo, inviting you back to 1965 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Golden Patriot courses at the historic Wigwam Resort. Our summer celebration kicks off this Memorial Day weekend with Bunker to Bunker, the golf show's throwback with Bunkerville Golf Tournament. The fourth annual stay and play sells out quick every year for good reason. Great golf, great resort, great values. The two-person scramble is on the world-renowned gold course, loaded with special throwback prizes, awards, and lunch. It even includes a free coupon for a second round of golf, all for just $82. Bring the whole family and enjoy the entire weekend with room night specials starting at just $110 per night. Now that's a holiday value you won't find anywhere else. Proceeds benefit Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Fighter Country Partnership. Space is limited, so register today at BunkerGolf.com. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Service is out today doing a little bit of automotive training so he can help you with your car next Saturday. He'll be back with me. Today I brought in Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialist. Joel's a good friend of mine. His shop is a stone's throw away from Tri-City Transmission, and Joel and I diagnose cars a lot together. Joel, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. His hearing is not so good. So when he's got a car with a noise, he always comes by. He goes, do you hear it? Uh Uh-huh, I hear it. Do you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. (laughs) He goes, I can't hear it. He tells me, I I know you can't hear, Joel. (laughs) 
So anytime it's a sensation feeling, I go over to Joel's shop. I go, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So we, it, it's kind of fun because we, we're both problem solvers and we like to do it together. So, But Arizona Imports, uh, they do a lot of Asian vehicles and a lot of European, a lot of Volkswagen. We got, I see we got a couple of, uh, we got a Volkswagen call right here. So we're going to go with Dustin in Santan Valley on a 2004 Volkswagen Touareg. Hey, Justin, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you today? Hi, I appreciate you taking my call. You bet. Uh, okay, so when I'm accelerating in my car, it's only happened maybe half a dozen times, but when I'm accelerating and it's shifting between third and fourth gear, it seems like it just completely misses the gear and it it idles, it revs up, and nothing happens. And that'll last sometimes up to 15 seconds before it finally jerks into gear. Has a check engine light come on at all or any lights that would tell you there's a problem? I mean, that, that car is one of those that's going to turn a light on, like, if anything happens. Right, and and this is the one thing that it doesn't turn on. And this is a automatic transmission? Yes. Any thoughts, Joel? How long is that delay? Um, I, I would say that the longest delay was about 15 seconds. I actually had to coast to the side of the road before it would finally get into was gear. Was the engine revving at the same time? Would it rev? Yes, yes. That's really strange because that's a very advanced transmission yeah, I, in that thing. I'm surprised there's no light on. Nah. I'm, I, it's got to be the loose nut behind the wheel. I, I'm teasing, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I don't, I, I, I'm don't. i stumped on that one because because what these cars do when they slip, any of these what I call smart transmissions, in other words, they got more than one speed sensor, they got two speed sensors in them, they know when they slip. And if the engine is revving and it's not actually moving the car along, that's what I would describe as a slip. That transmission will look at those two speed sensors or that computer and say, hey, we got a problem. Lights are going to go off. we got a transmission issue. And then it's going to go into a limp mode where it's just going to stick it in one gear and p- pull you over to the side of the road. So you got me stumped on that one. I'm thinking that's- the same thing. It would be something, unless you just got a hesitation, it feels that way. It's just hard to tell on the radio. So I wish I could be of more help. Thanks so much for the call, Dustin. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And, Joel, I've got a text here from someone. I wish they would put their name in here. I have a 2002 Honda Accord with 150,000 miles with a four-cylinder. I tried to start it the other day, and I turned it over, and it wouldn't start. After a few tries, it finally started. It has been fine ever since. What would cause that? Two things came to mind right away, Dave. One is the main relay. They call it the main relay or the PGI-F relay. If it was actually cranking and not starting, that was a very common failure in Hondas, especially of those years. For sure. Now, that's a question. The first question we ask when somebody calls our shop, they say, hey, my car won't start. Well, the first question we ask them, well, is it cranking but not starting or is it just going click? You know, because that's back to the interstate battery thing, you know. Hey, do you need to go see interstate for a new battery? Is it going click or is it going... And then you make the sound effects at the front counter. Is it going... Or is it going click or is it going click, click, click? <laughs> that's probably the best uh, crank no start I've heard from a, from a technician in a while. So thanks so much for the text. I've got another one here. Let's see. Ha- have a Sentra with 126K on it and most likely original plugs. Do I need to change the coil packs too? They're about 70 a piece. No, you would need to replace the spark plugs unless you were having a problem. So just do the spark plugs? That's what I would do. Unless there was a problem, then I would look at the coils. But if it has the original spark plugs, I'd be replacing those plugs ASAP. All right, you've been scolded by Joel from Arizona Import Specialist to get those spark plugs changed immediately. Well, let's go with Bob in Scottsdale on a 2005 BMW 325. Hey, Bob, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you today? Hey, Dave, thanks for taking my phone call. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, I, my car, I have three questions for you. The first one is, um, I have 208,000 miles on this car. It runs fantastic. Um, back in 2010, I think the spark plugs were changed, you know? How many miles did you say were on it? 208. 208 that barely broken in. <laughs> so I'm thinking, can I change these myself? Well, that's an E90, that model, and... I don't know how mechanical you are. It's not brain surgery on that car, but it's not easy. You'd need to remove a lot of covers to get to it. You'd have to pull the coils out. Those plugs were due 100,000 miles each, and those are the newer spark plugs, the smaller ones I was talking about earlier. Okay. So, you know, I'll take it to the dealer. That's fine. Um, You don't need to go to the dealer. You can go to a good independent that fixes them. You'd save a lot of money and get a quality job. (laughs) For sure. All right. 
then I'll, then I'll definitely do that. Um, the second question is, when, when I'm, I'm driving my car, and recently I feel like this vibration when I hit 40 miles an hour, and I think it's a drive shaft. It's a clear possibility too. You need to know if you're feeling it. In, if you're feeling it in the seat, the seat like in your pants, is the shifter shaking? That could be a drive shift. It could be a, a rear tire. It could be a lot of different things. Vibration is one of the harder things to figure out. You need someone to ride in that car and try and eliminate things to to determine what's causing the vibration. But two hundred thousand miles could be a lot of different components. Well, and I think that's something that everyone can learn from. And I brought this up on the show. And I'm just trying to save you headache stress and hassle at the auto repair shop because i think i think the stress and hassle goes from you walk up to the counter you say hey my car vibrates you know okay great and you drop your keys off and they look at it and they go wow it's vibrating because the engine mounts are bad so they replace the engine mounts and you go pick your car up and start it up and your drive away you hit 40 miles an hour and you go it's still there you know dave you're right about that and the first thing that we try and do is say let us go for a ride with you so we can attack the right vibration or the right noise and about 50% of the time, the customer goes, I don't have the time for that. But we really advise you. Trust me. If you've got a noise in your car or a vibration and you just want to cut out that second trip to the auto shop with a little bit of steamy red because, you you know, you just gave them 500 bucks and you got exactly the same problem. And it may very well. You did need some motor mounts. I can't get into someone's car and not feel something wrong. So I almost offend all my friends. I go for a ride with them and I'm like, when are you can fix that wheel bearing? <laughs> and, and, and so... Get them to go for a ride with you. It's going to save you a ton of trouble. That's where I sometimes you go to these shops and they don't really get out from behind the counter to go see your car, go look at your car, go get a feel for your car. You want that from auto repair. So thanks so much for the call, Bob. We are going to go with Brandon in Peoria. He's got a 2001 Pontiac Trans Am. Hey, Brandon, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Hey, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Okay, uh, for a while now, I've had an issue where uh, from about 3,000 RPM up to about, I'd say, 7 near red line, uh, under medium to heavy acceleration, uh, both the interior and exterior lights dim. And on top of it, <clears throat> once in a while, while I'm actually driving, uh, the gauges will flip off, the radio will flip off, and come right back on. Um, I've replaced the battery with an interstate battery uh, recently. Excellent and choice. I've also, uh, and also replaced the alternator with a, uh, a larger amperage alternator. Uh, it's got 170,000 miles on it. And it, it's one of these things where I, I don't know where to begin. I've heard some people say it could be a uh, body control module. I've heard other people say it could be a ground somewhere, but... Where would be a good place to start? When the lights dim out, do they, like, go completely dark, or is it just kind of like a mild blip? It's, it, uh, when the lights dim, they just it's mild. It's not completely dark. Uh, it's, it's just mild. Did you replace the battery in the old day because they actually failed or because you thought they were failing? Uh, the old alternator was failing. And then I think the battery just died because they don't last longer than two years. I'm so thinking here. of ground through your whole conversation here. That's the first thing I was thinking after you'd said you replaced that. I'd be thinking to have your grounds checked. You need someone to put a meter on that car while it's happening to see your voltage is going up and down and to be checking all your grounds because a, a, a little bad ground could be causing all of those issues. You know, when these cars get older, stuff like that starts to show up. You know, we see more problems from battery cable issues and bad batteries. High resistance through a cable, yeah. And, and the thing about batteries is that, you know, our testers in the shop have become very predictable. So we'll put, we'll put this tester on the battery and it'll say, bad battery. And you go, it's not bad. The car starts just fine. And so we don't really trust them. They're just kind of an input to the situation because I think those testers are made by battery companies. But I'm uh, not really sure about that. But there is a weak battery causes all kinds of problems in cars. It, it causes weird drivability issues because, you know, the vehicle, the voltage will drop down. The computer loses some memory or something, you know, something's different. And the next day, you know, it's, you start it up and it drives and the computer relearns and everything's working great until that, that night, you know, the voltage goes down again and it's, we've got a problem. So for batteries, you don't really want to live with a battery that's kind of just marginal anymore. No, and you want someone good to check your car at the same time because we had a car just yesterday. They'd put a battery, an alternator, and a starter in it, and the battery cable was corroded. 
and they just put it right back on. It was had to be a friend a friend of my son's, and he came in. He didn't have much money, and I was like, well, I'll look at it. I'll take a look. And my mechanic told me the battery cables, dirty. we cleaned it, everything was fixed. Bad connection. Amazing. So you wonder if you needed the alternator and the other pieces. We'll never know that now. People jump right past that. Well, Brandon, thanks so much for the call. We are going to go with Pete in Phoenix on a 2002 Chevrolet Blazer. How can we help you, Pete? Yeah, um, my elderly neighbor asked me to take his uh, O2 Blazer to the emissions. He has an illness, and it failed uh, the OBD, the onboard diagnostic. The He hadn't been driving it at all, and prior to my taking it to the emissions, the battery had to be replaced. He had a friend get him a new battery. and So it failed the onboard diagnostic, and there's no smoke coming out of the tailpipe. So then... Um, last week i took it to a different emissions place it failed again um it's not being driven it's his vehicle he's elderly he's having a health problem so i'm wondering do you know what what you failed for no i don't i'm assuming you failed for incomplete monitors because you didn't drive it enough and then the battery had died and you changed the battery my suggestion would be to take the car from your neighbor drive it maybe drive it for a couple days on the freeway normal driving a few trips and then Maybe stop by a, a regular shop and see if they could just give you a quick scan to see if you completed the monitors before you go back to emissions and have to pay again. That's what I would try. Well, and this is really this is really all cars anymore. After 1995 or 96 model year, they went to OBD2. So when you go to the mission station, they don't put your car on those big drums. You know, they just plug into it. And what they're doing, these cars are self-testing, so it's running these tests. So the monitors are, hey, we run the evaporative system test. We run the, you know, uh, Joel, what are some of the other tests this thing runs? There's Oxygen sensors, catalytic converter. The way to think of it is that test that used to go for once a year is being run every minute you're driving that car now. It's happening all the time. But some of those tests, like the EVAP test, is kind of a problem because it's got to be the right temperature It takes a while to complete. Right temperature you got to be on the freeway. you got to be between a three-quarters of a tank and a quarter tank. And people, I've known people for years, their light's on. They go, I'll just disconnect the battery, clear the codes, and go to emissions. Not going to work. They're a little smaller than the rest of us. <laughs> those tests haven't run, so the, the car can't even tell on itself. So it basically, when they plug into it, it says, test not, not done, not ready. And you're not going to get through all those monitors and those tests unless you actually just drive the car. So you're going to have to give the car to you. Anytime we do an emissions repair at our shop, we usually tell the customer, take the car, drive it three or four days. If the light doesn't come on, go to emissions. Or if you want to feel free, stop by here. We'll just plug in and make sure you're good to go. Well, when we come back, we've got Craig, Tim, Dan, and Steve. You're listening to Dave without Matt today on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What would happen if you couldn't listen to Arizona's morning news on your way to work? I'd be pretty lost. I mean, that's what wakes me up. It gets me out of bed. How do you know what's going on in your community? If you're not listening to the radio, you're not listening to the news. You don't know anything. Huh? I should have tuned in. (laughs) Get your day started with Arizona's only all-news morning show. Arizona's Morning News. Weekday mornings 5 till 9. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. When you're searching for an automotive service relationship, quality and trust matters. Hi, Dave Denman here from Dave's Car Care, where we've been servicing our customers from the same location with the same ownership for over 32 years. We're on the northwest corner of 51st Avenue in Peoria. At Dave's Car Care, we strive to earn your trust every time you turn the key. With a friendly and courteous staff that has earned us a A A-plus rating from BBB, AAA approved auto repair, because we really do practice what we preach. We provide nationwide warranty, shuttle service, available owner cars, and financing options to make your experience with us convenient. We also give you the peace of mind that your job gets done right the first time. With ASC certified technicians at a clean, state-of-the-art facility. We're your neighborhood service solution for all makes and models and a great alternative to the dealership. Dave's Car Care, where quality has always and still does matter. Check us out at davescarcareaz.com. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct. 
at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Way too early for Santa, and no superheroes have been spotted in the neighborhood. Let's agree right now, you shouldn't go up there. So, if the roof on your home or your business is over 10 years old, somebody ought to go up there and check for possible problems. Why not let Keiko do it for free? Why Keiko? Well, for over 20 years, Arizona has trusted Keiko Roofing with their flat, foam, tile, or shingle roofs. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. You see, you can also trust Kaiko to use only the finest materials installed by the most skilled workers, real roofing professionals. Invite Kaiko up on your roof for a free checkup and peace of mind. Kaiko, K Y K O, 602 944 4600, or kaikoroofing.com. All your financing options will be there too. So, why do you want Kaiko on your roof? Because they're crazy about quality. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASE Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhertz.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Service is out today. So I brought in Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialist, who is a friend of mine whose shop is a stone's throw away from mine, and uh, someone who often I pick his brain when I got something I can't fix. He calls me when he's got something he can't fix, although he won't admit that, I'm pretty sure. I admit everything. <laughs> For sure. Well... We appreciate you joining us. We are going to get right to the phones. We've got some phone calls to get before we go out. We're going to go with Tim in Scottsdale. He's got a 2007 uh, Silverado. Hey, Tim, how can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. For sure. Hey, uh, just I have two quick questions for you. My first question is about spark plugs on your topic this morning. I'd like to know if um, I would benefit from a... Uh, a swap to those new E3s in my L59 engine. I see Joel hiding under the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to say that General Motors knew a lot more about spark plugs than anybody else that built that truck, and I would stick with the original style AC Delco spark plugs that came in that vehicle. I didn't I didn't write down how many miles you had, but if you're close to I would definitely replace those w- plugs and the little wires that go to them that come off the coil because they – when you move them on and off, they don't hold on as good, and it's not that expensive. Stick with the AC Delco plug that came with the car. For sure. And your okay. second question? Well, my second question had to do with your previous caller about the blend doors. Mm. I had this, I had the same problem on an 04 Silverado, and I had found that um, this could be a fix. It could not. But if you remove both battery cables from the battery, short them together, drain the capacitors, let it sit for an hour, reconnect the battery cables, and the blend door motors should zero out back to default. Works about 50% of the time, but you're right on. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good point. And more and more, you know, we got cars doing weird things. I don't know. Go and plug the cables and tie them together for, you know, for a few minutes and see what One happens. One other thing, back to batteries, be real careful when you jumpstart your cars nowadays. One of the, You can make us rich and cause yourself a lot of money by jumpstarting a car and just doing it wrong. That's why I'm not a big fan of getting batteries changed out on the side of the road, you know, because you got a guy, he may, you know, when you're there on the side of the road, you don't quite have all the tools, and if you got a round hole and a square peg, you're going to make it fit because you got to get this guy to work because he's open for the convenience of this roadside battery change. 
you know, changing a battery is a big deal. A lot of things, you change batteries and, you know, it can mess up your blend doors or your mode doors or whatever, you know, all this other electronics that goes in your car and another reason to have a good battery in your car. So, Tim, thanks so much for the call. I would stick with those OEM spark plugs or original equipment, what the factory put in it. We're going to go, go with Craig in Scottsdale on a 2008 Chevy Tahoe. How can we help you, Craig? Hey, good morning, guys. Um, this is my wife's car, and she uh, will drive it. And then um, park it, go in the house or go do something, then come back out, and it'll be totally dead. No lights, no turnover, no anything. And then come back maybe five, ten, ten minutes later, and it'll uh, start right up. And I've replaced the uh, cable, battery cables, uh, cleaned everything. So you put the, you put, she puts the key in the ignition, turns it to the run position, the gauges don't light up, nothing like happens there? No, no lights, no nothing. She turn, it doesn't. It's there's no power whatsoever. Sounds to me like you've got a bad connection somewhere along the line. What model was it again? It was a 2008 uh, Chevy Tahoe. Yeah, and there's one other thing. I don't know if it'll be related. She'll be um, driving down the road, and all of a sudden the locks will all cycle through two or three times, and at the same time, the gauges on the dashboard. We'll just go from you know zero you, out. You've got a bad you've got a bad electrical connection somewhere along that line. If it's a side terminal battery, go ahead and remove those bolts and replace the battery bolts and and clean those connections and start with that. Yeah, give that a shot, Craig. Well, you're in Scottsdale. There's two bumper to bumper shops in Scottsdale. In North Scottsdale, we've got Air Park Auto Service. They're excellent in South Scottsdale. We've got Whitey's Auto Repair. If you want to throw in the towel, I know I know that uh, there's guys over there that will have no problem fixing that. So we're going to sneak in Dan in Phoenix on a 2013 Nissan Frontier. Hey, Dan, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Well, I have kind of an interesting problem. I have, this truck has 20,000 miles on it, and the last 4,000 miles I put three clutches in it. And it's a manual transmission, and I'm really trying to figure out why I'm going through this. Are you doing the clutch repair yourself? Yes. Okay. I'm, I, I, ha- I had a shop at one point in time. I am a, somewhat of a mechanic, um, and I have people at the shop where I'm at now that are mechanics, and it's a machine shop, actually, and we do a lot of other stuff here, too, and they're all baffled. I took it to a quite a few of my old customers and asked them what they thought the problem was. What does that was. clutch look like when you take it out? Crisp, burnt, burnt to a crisp. And who drives it? Just you? Me, just me. And you've been driving a long time manual transmission? 30 some years. I had um, two Nissans, two uh, Rangers, a Jeep, and a Volkswagen. Are you sure it's becoming fully disengaged when your foot's off the clutch? Disengaged? Disengaged, yes. It, when my foot's off the clutch... Uh, I, you know, the thing that you, when you're driving it, it doesn't slip. Uh, you don't feel it slip. Of course, I don't, I don't hot rod anymore, but for some reason or another, it's, it's just chewing up the disc. And then, of course, once it gets it so thin, then it just, you know, starts slipping real bad. I'm thinking something's keeping that slave cylinder depressed a little bit, or your flywheel's wrong, or you got the wrong part to start. Yeah, that's, uh, there's no reason that should happen. Something's not happening right. When you do a clutch, a couple key things you really want to do, there's a bearing retainer where the throwout bearing rides. That needs to be good and smooth and free flowing. A lot of times those will get, they'll get uh, grooves in them, and they will not allow things to move real nicely. The other thing is just on the, uh, on the clutch splines themselves where the clutch disc goes right there, that needs to be real clean. And then we like to use a real light graphite grease so that clutch can slide nicely on there. But he may have a sticking slave cylinder. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking something's keeping it engaged. So, I mean, you know, we hardly see manual transmissions anymore, and fewer and fewer people know how to work on them. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it used to be a good percentage of what's on the road, but I bet you of all the cars produced in 2015, I'm going to make up a statistic like most of them, probably 1% of the cars on the road are manuals. And now they got those new dual mass flywheels that make the clutch jobs very expensive to the consumer. Two thousand dollars on a Volkswagen Jetta is a very common job nowadays for the a clutch. Th- the other thing we didn't ask him about was the flywheel cut. So we are going to be back next week. You listen to Bumper to Bumper Radio. See you then. Hi, I'm Scott, general manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. 
We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Tri-City Transmission. Hi, Jerry Colangelo inviting you back to 1965 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Gold and Patriot courses at the historic Wigwam Resort. Our celebration kicks off this Memorial Day weekend with Bunker to Bunkers, Throwback with Bunkerville Golf Tournament, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Fighter Country Partnership. The two-person scramble is loaded with special throwback prizes, lunch, and a coupon for a free second round of golf, all for just $82. Room specials start as low as $110 per night. Register to today at BunkerGolf.com. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Join us for everything automotive on Bumper to Bumper Radio with Dave Riccio and Matt Allen. The KTAR Car Guys, every Saturday, 11 to noon on KTAR News, 92.3 FM. Spring is here, but big, bad summer's just around the corner. Join us this Saturday for the...